Yeah, hi folks. Yes, the Maori Party are completely corrupt, much the same as the Mahuta family. And I must say, the usually crappy New Zealand Herald did some good work exposing this. But sadly, I can't say the same about One News. Have a look. Deputy Labour leader Calvin Davis has apologised to a Māori Act MP after telling her to leave her Pākehā world. The remarks drawn sharp criticism from members of his own party and sparked a wider conversation about what it means to be Māori. Our Māori Affairs reporter Te Anua Huru Hanganui reports. It started with a question from Act MP Karen Shaw about Oranga Tamariki. Now, did you see what scummy One News did there? They didn't give any details about the question. The actual question involved Maori corruption, but they didn't mention that because they are protecting the Maori party. This was the response from the children's minister. What the member needs to do is cross the bridge that is Te Tiriti or Waitangi from her Pākehā world into the Māori world and understand exactly why, uh, how the Māori world operates. It's no good looking. It's no good looking at the world from um, a, a vanilla lens. Now that was classic left-wing deflection. Calvin made it all about race. Look over there. Again, to protect the Maori party. And you'll see why later. The ACT MP is a proud Ngāpuhi descendant. The minister's words cutting deep. I found it quite hurtful, the personal attack on my identity and how I see the world. And I don't think anybody should have to justify themselves like that. She's not the only one to take offence, even Labour colleagues piling in. He was wrong and his, uh, his statement's just been too personal. I've been the subject of the same kind of uh, abuse. I don't support it. Calvin Davis has now phoned to apologise, admitting his words were a mistake. It wasn't an attack on her whakapapa. Now this is Calvin and his father. Now his father has blue eyes and blonde hair. Calvin is about as much Maori as I am. Now Karen Shaw has much more Maori blood than he has. Now, as we learn nothing from One News, scummy One News, I now turn to the platform for some answers and hat tip to Peter Rhodes for this one. So the other story, of course, that was kicking around yesterday, well, it was from um, Wednesday night. Calvin Davies uh, asked a tricky question about Oranga Tam Tamariki and its performance. Basically shot, uh, shot back at Karen uh, Chaw who was an ACT MP and is of Māori descent, um, shot, back, uh, shot back at her that basically she wasn't Māori enough and she should cross the bridge into Māoridom and stop being so vanilla in her questioning. And it really was a you're not Māori enough uh, deflection uh, away from the question by a senior member of the Cabinet to describe what has happened since we, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, expressed concern. At no, she didn't. That was just lip service. Calvin Davis' attitude, he originally was all staunch, I'm not going to apologise. And then yesterday afternoon it emerged he had rung, privately rung, uh, uh, Karen Chaw and had apologised. And Karen Chaw joins us now. Karen, I have to say that it is rare uh, that so quickly someone who has been perhaps been criticised for something they've done, turns around and personally apologises to someone. I also thought it was very gracious about the way you have essentially accepted that apology, haven't you? Oh, yeah, I appreciate that, Sean. I mean, at the end of the day, he has apologised and I've taken that as a genuine apology. And I really hope that as a whole of Parliament that we can move forward and learn to have... Uh, you know, decent debates without this um, personal attacks. Mm. 
Well, I want to give you the chance to get back to what your question originally was about. Because whether or not he's apologised, we're not talking about what you wanted to talk about. And what was the concern you were raising in the question that you asked originally? Oh, my, my concern really is that uh, uh, Oranga Tamariki has just um, uh, recently signed a, a contract with um, John Tamahedi, one of John Tamahedi's charities. And the, some of his charities are now under investigation for, for essentially bankrolling um, John Tamahedi and the Māori Party's political ambition. Now there's the corruption, folks. Be up to the tune of about um, half a million. Anyway, now to the Herald for some background, which I recorded yesterday. Charities connected to Te Party Maori President John Tamahiri are under investigation after financial reports showed nearly $500,000 in charitable funds had been used to bankroll his mayoral and general election campaigns. Financial statements filed to the Charities Register for Te Whānau Owaipa Rera Trust Group showed $385,307 had been advanced in related party interest-free loans to its chief executive to pursue the general elections and political aspirations with the candidacy recorded as being endorsed. As of June 30, 2021, the filing date for the most recently published accounts, no repayments had been made. Accounts for the National Urban Maori Authority show $82,695 in sponsorship payments were provided to its chief executive to pursue the 2020 elections and political aspirations for Maori Party with the candidacy again being endorsed by the charity's board. Tamahiri is chief executive of both organisations and ran a failed campaign for the Auckland mayoralty in 2019. So it appears Tamahiri sponsored Tamahiri, aka the Maori Party. He was also a candidate and co-leader of Te Party Māori during the 2020 general election and this year he became the party's president. Recent polling suggests the party could hold the balance of power after next year's election. And this is why Calvin Davis deflected. He's protecting the Māori party as Labour will need them in the next election. Charities can express support for a particular policy of a political party that is important to their charitable purpose. However, a charity must not support or oppose a political party or candidate. This includes making a donation to a political party or a candidate's election campaign, endorsing a party or candidate, or allowing a party or candidate to use a charity's resources weight said. Waite said the political campaigning and donations payments were being investigated, with her office having opened a file in 2019 when Tamahiri disclosed his mayoral campaign received a $100,000 donation from Waipa Deregistered charities lose their tax-free status and risk income tax being applied across their net assets. According to the most recent Waipa accounts, this could expose the organisation to a $16 million tax bill. Now that name, Waipa comes up everywhere and, and is now linked to Oranga Tamariki. And here's the, here's the link. Te Whānau O Waipa Rera, co-partner with Oranga Tamariki to care for Whānau. Today marked the start of Whānau gaining more control over their Tamariki from the Crown as Oranga Tamariki CEO Chappi Tikani and Te Whānau O Waipa Rera CEO 
John Tamahiri signed a strategic partnership agreement and outcomes agreement at Honi Waititi Marae. Now, more co-governance and more separatism there, folks. Yeah, exactly, which which is not a small change, right? And and uh, the consequences of that will be, if, if it is deemed that he's done something wrong, that the charity will be um, taken off the charity's list. Register, um, yep. and my Yeah, and my concern is, well, what is OT going to do about that um, if that charity is struck off? And, and they are in a contractual that, relationship with that charity. Yeah, yeah I get and you. Will and that, will that um, OT and that charity's um, contract end or partnership end. And of course, the Maori Party is racist. Now, who would have thought? On the Maori Party's website, and there it's, uh, I think, health, sport, recreation, wellness policy, is the following statement. It is a known fact that Maori genetic makeup is stronger than others. David Seymour, leader of the ACT Party, came across that statement a month or so ago and wrote to the Race Relations Commissioner saying he thought it was racist and it should be investigated. Yesterday, in frustration in Parliament, he stood up and told his tale of, well, of frustration with Meng Foon, the Race Relations Commissioner, who doesn't seem, or we don't know precisely what Meng Foon has done in reaction to what appears to be, prima facie, a very racist statement from a political party that is represented in Parliament. And as of this morning, that statement, it is a known fact that Maori genetic makeup is stronger than others, is still on the website. And it's still there today. There it is, folks. Now, I posted a link to this below, along with other links as well. Um, I'm very pleased to say that Ming Fu, the Race Relations Commissioner, is engaging with us and he joins us uh, on the line now. Ming, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning at short notice. Morning, morning, Sean, is it? Yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora. All right. Um, have you done anything? Well, first, first let's get to it. Do you believe that that's a racist statement? Well, it's um, a thing that we do not condone, people making those statements. Um, so we believe it is um, racist. So you say it other, is a racist statement? If any other group of people said that, they would be labelled racist, so I've got to be even-handed. OK, so it's a racist statement. Um, so you're in agreement with David Seymour on that. Have you been alerted to this, what, about four weeks ago? Have you done anything about that racist statement which is published on the official web page of a political party that is represented in the New Zealand Parliament, therefore has some weight. Yeah, we, we um, had Seymour write to us and uh, we said we were going to meet with the Māori Party to indicate our um, dissatisfaction of this particular statement. Um, but I know that um, Probably there's a, another agenda in terms of the the inequities of sporting <laughs> inequities. Here we go. Here he goes again, trying to dodge. He always tries to dodge. Um, allocation of funding. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's. Uh, well, you're not involved. You're not the commissioner of sport, Ming. With the greatest of respect, so let's stick to the issue, shall we? Carry on. OK, so yes, you say it's a racist statement. Yes, David Seymour contacted you. Have you had any response from the Māori Party? Have you approached them? Have you had a discussion with them? We have approached them. There has been no response yet, and our team is endeavouring to make a time for us to see them. And of course, the Maori Party won't respond, nor will they take down their racist statement. And of course, Ming Foon won't push it any further, 
as he is only interested in white racism. When white people make statements like that, Ming Fun doesn't call for a meeting, he just goes straight to the media.